Good morning. Uh, we're going to continue here in uh, Luke chapter 20 for our devotional time. So Luke chapter 20, um, starting in verse 20. So they're trying to trap Jesus and trick him. So there's two people now to come up with two sets of questions. It says, keeping in close watch on him, they sent spies who pretended to be sincere. They hoped to catch Jesus in something he said so that they might hand him over to the, to the power and authority of the governor. So the spies question him, Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right, and you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Right? But he saw through their duplicity and said to them, so he knows, and, and so even their, their flattery. And how they're saying, you know, we know you're good. We know you. he knows what their real heart and intention is. So he saw through their duplicity. And he says, show me a, denar a denarius whose image and inscription are on it. Caesar's, they replied. So he said to them, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. And they were unable to trap him in what he had said there in public. And, and they were astonished by his answer, and they became silent. So the, the reason they asked him this question is they, were, they had to pay taxes to Rome. We've talked about that a little bit already, right? Like Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Tax collectors were hated. Um, it said that they, the people in Palestine were paying at this time about 30 to 40 percent in taxes. So it was an incredible burden. So they, they wanted to trap him because if he said, um, you know, is it, uh, is it right to pay taxes um, to, to Caesar or not? If he says, yes, it's right for us to pay taxes to Caesar, then they would have accused him to the Jews and said to the people, see, he supports Rome. If he says, no, we don't need to pay um, taxes to Caesar, then they would go to the Romans and say, hey, this guy's telling us not to pay taxes, which the Romans then would not approve of, and he'd be in trouble with the Romans. So Jesus' answer, again, it, the wisdom with which he answers, he just shuts them down. They were even amazed. And he says, hey, who's on that money? Whose picture is it? Caesar's. Then give Caesar's what it's his, but give to God what is God's. So that kind of leaves the question, right? What is it that belongs to Caesar? Or what, what are the things of this world that are, you know, and, that, and what are the things that, that we owe God or belong to God? Give to God what is God. God's. Well, there are certain things right right away. Um, praise, worship, um, the first place in our lives, um, obedience. Uh, these are all things that are owed only to God. Um, our hearts. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. But what are the things that um, are, are God's that we might be giving to Caesar, that we should be giving to God. So think about that. And then he goes on another question. We'll see if I have a little bit of time and go ahead and pull, sit, fit this one in here. Um, it says, some of the Sadducees who say that there is no resurrection came to Jesus with a question. So there's the Pharisees are the ones we've mostly been hearing about. Now you, the Sadducees was another group of religious leaders. Pharisees would be what you would consider like the conservative religious people. They believed in the resurrection. They believed in heaven and hell, reward and punishment. And the Sadducees, however, it says here, they um, who say there is no resurrection. So these are Jewish teachers, but they don't even they don't believe in resurrection. So they come to Jesus with this question. Moses wrote us that a man's brother, if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married a woman and died childless. The second, and then the third married her. In the same way, all seven brothers died, leaving no children. Finally, the woman died too. Now, then, in the resurrection, whose wife will she be, since the seven were married to her? So you can, you know, so Jesus replies to them. Now you can almost see them sitting around, sitting around talking about this question with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, this endless debate, where they would use this as a way to prove, see, there's no way that there's resurrection, because then who is she going to be married to, right? Um... And the Pharisees probably didn't have an adequate answer. Well, here's Jesus' reply. The people of this age get married and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of, part, of taking part in the age to come and in the resurrection from the dead 
will neither marry nor be given in marriage. And they can no longer die, for they are like the angels. They are God's children, since they are children of the resurrection. But in the account of the burning bush, even Moses showed that the dead rise, because, for he calls the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. So the teachers of the law were responded. So listen, well said, teacher. And no one dared ask him any more questions. The, the well said there were by the Pharisees or the others who believed in the resurrection. When he finally silenced this argument, they thought, they even recognized, well said. Jesus had more in common with the Pharisees doctrinally than the Sadducees. But they still were against him because of who he said he was. But in this case, then, Jesus' response does two things. It explains a little bit about what heaven will be like, that there won't be marriage or people getting married. So that's one aspect. And again, when we think, when we're on this side of, of heaven, you know, we think of, of, of marriage and, and relationships and we just think, oh man, how, why won't we be able to have that and enjoy that? But remember, we haven't even imagined whatever God has planned for us in heaven, however things will be in heaven, are going to be different and better than we can imagine. And the idea then here is, the relationships between us and God will change. Therefore, our relationships with each other will also change. So Jesus affirms a little bit about what heaven will be like, and then he also affirms the resurrection. He clearly says there will be a resurrection, and he says it, it was communicated in the Old Testament, and he affirms it here in the New Testament. So, um, all right, well, with that, we will um, give that a good place to stop for today. Again, encourage you guys uh, to just keep praying, keep growing. Uh, if you have questions about what we're talking about, share those in the comments. Um, and if you're here around the Syracuse area, please let us know uh, that you're tuning in and how we can just connect with you. And I hope to see you as soon as we're able to start gathering again yeah, together for worship. God bless you.